Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to week five of our Lenten at Home Mission. My name is Father Carl, I'm the Associate Pastor here at St. Ignatius, and this week's theme is how death can lead to new life and the resurrection through Jesus Christ. Because in our Gospel we hear the story of how Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead to a newness of life. And this event is really the crescendo, like the dramatic climax of everything that John's Gospel wants to tell us. One miracle leads to another and they keep getting bigger and bigger and increasing until finally Jesus raises a dead man and brings him back to life. This is the last miracle that Jesus works, of course, before his own death and resurrection. So he's saying something really important. And in order to capture the message of this miracle, we need to zoom into a conversation that Jesus has with Martha, with Martha right before he raises Lazarus from the dead. And so Martha says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus says, your brother will live. And she says, of course he'll live when we are all raised from the dead in the resurrection. And Jesus says this, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I'm the life. He's saying something very critical about his own nature, about the nature of God that God so closely associates himself with life that we can say that God is life itself. God radiates life. He stretches out life and makes whatever he touches, just like what Midas touches turns to gold, whatever God comes into contact with, he begets life. Life flourishes, life increases and grows. You could kind of take an example um, from our world, like the sun. So in our universe, the sun is the source of heat. You could say that the sun is heat itself. It radiates out heat so that its heat can be felt for billions of miles away. Let's say if we were to put one of us, you or me, into a spaceship and send us into the sun. Um, of course, the closer we would get to the sun, it would get hotter and hotter. But if we were to reach out and touch the sun, we would become heat. We would become totally transformed into the heat of the sun. Um, all that's in us would become just as hot, at the same temperature as the sun. And anything that's in us that is not heat uh, would have to pass away, would have to be burned away in order for us to be transformed into the very heat of the sun. The same goes for God's life. When we draw nearer to God, when we reach out and touch God in our faith, in our prayer, we become transformed into God's own life. So much so that we share God's very life. And anything that's within us that is not God's life, that's contrary to God's life, that doesn't correspond to it, has to pass away, has to be kind of burned away, just like by the heat of the sun. I think that this is a pretty good metaphor or way of describing the resurrection. Because the resurrection is where God's very own life comes into contact with human nature and is united with it. So that human nature is transformed into God's life. A life that is abundant, a life that is sustained, a life that will never end. So what's the role of death in all of this? How does death lead to life? I think there's two things that are going on, really. And the first is a summons. So God is summoning us to lay down any of those aspects of our personality, of ourself, that do not correspond to his own life. Each of us have within us selfishness or pride um, or any other thing that distracts us from God. Bad habits. And in order to reach out and touch God's life, to receive it, to be transformed into the life that God wants to offer us, we need to lay those things down. We need to put them to death, you could say. They need to pass away so that God's life can fill and sustain us. So there's a summons to approach death and to embrace it, which is a unique relationship that Christians have with death, knowing that we pass through death 
into life. Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, we cannot have life. But in addition to this summons, there's also a promise. Sometimes death and loss just happens. Um, we're confronted with it. But we know that where there is death, like Jesus' own cross, like his own death, there is the promise of a resurrection that only God can give. So there's a summons and there's a promise. A promise that we know when death exists, God's life can shine forth. And at the same time, it's not until death exists that God's true life can shine forth in a glorious and triumphant way. So I want to leave you with some reflection questions for this week. As you go about in prayer, ask yourselves, what sort of death have you experienced this year during the pandemic or for whatever other reason? And has God brought new life out of that death? Or are you still waiting to experience that new life? Do you believe that God's glory can be manifest even in the midst of tragedy and loss, just like Martha confessed a belief in? And finally, what in your life is Jesus asking you to lay down so that you might experience the newness of the resurrection? And an action item. Each of, the, of these weeks during our at-home mission, we've been giving you some way to engage, um, some action. And this week's action is to think of something that you can uh, lay down, something that you can give up. Maybe it's uh, screen time for this entire week. Maybe it's complaining, maybe it's um, uh, an unhealthy food or an unhealthy habit. Something that you can lay down and put to death, you could say, just for this week as a symbol of your yes to the death that God wants to lead you through spiritually so that you can experience the resurrection of Jesus at Easter time. In addition to that, very similar to last week, we want to hear from you. We want, as we're envisioning the, the future of our parish, the future of our faith, we want to hear your ideas. We want to hear what it is that you can foresee for the future of our parish. And so we want you to, um, in your prayer, consider where you need life and how your parish can help. And also, how does our parish need new life? And is there a way that you can help with that? Leave us a message in an email at, at uh, lentmission at st-ignatius.org. Give us a phone call, or you can fill out the, the form on the Lenten Mission page on our website. I look forward to seeing all of you in person, whenever that might be. And until then, know of my prayers and my love. Have a great week.